you know, calories really are debunked because we are all so different. Welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry. Folks, how do the thoughts impact on the choices of food that you make? What is the root cause of problem eating? And how can we heal on the inside before healing on the outside? To answer some of these questions is qualified nutrition and health coach Adele Owens, aka the whole food hero. Adele, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much for having me, Carl. I'm delighted to be here. It's great to have you on. What part of the world are you in? Um, well, I have to state that I am from Donegal originally, but I'm based in County Down, so I get the best of both. A beautiful part of the world up there, absolutely. Let's get let's get cracking. It's going to be I think, a really interesting episode for our for our listeners. Let's chat about the mindset shift that has to happen in terms of when you're making those changes to a healthy diet and improving your diet. What are the mindset shifts that you have to make when you're doing that? Oh, that's a loaded question. Okay, so I think maybe the best place to start with that is maybe to talk about how I, you know, work with this with the people that I work with. Yeah, great. So, yeah, so I I use a blend of cognitive theory and um, performance mindset tools. And what what I mean by that in a sort of a concise nutshell is we all of the behaviors, all of the things that we do, the results that we get that are showing up in our lives um, are a result of the thoughts that we are thinking. So every single thought that you think is is setting up a vibration in your body and causing a result or a behavior. So if you think about that, and then if you think about the fact that actually you have the ability to change your thoughts, to completely master, in fact, your thoughts instead of being a slave to them, you then become the driver. You have the ability to, as Bob Proctor, my mentor would have said, you know, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. So in terms of making behavior shifts, the first piece is that awareness piece, you know, so actually becoming aware that there's something you need to work on, first of all and foremost, and then putting things in place to help you shift that. So you need to really look at the cause, the triggers. um, And then as I sort of use in the workshops that I do, you know, the three Ds. So decide, okay, so decide that you're going to change something. Okay, so what is it? What's your goal? And then put a date, in your diary, in your calendar that you're going to work towards. Now, you know, that that's movable, you know, okay, you can be flexible with that and then do. So the doing part is obviously taking small incremental actions every single day, Saturday and Sunday included, that pushes you forward and that, that gets you to where you want to be. So, you know, I suppose that the key thing for that, for people listening in, is that when they're making decisions, i.e. to choose a certain food or choose uh, to go for a walk or not to go for a walk, that that's the end of a process. That what you're saying is that, you know, that be- that begins with behavioral change. We're working on, on, on everything else before the decision. That The decision is the last and the, the, the chain of things that happen. And when you're actually picking the chocolate bar, it's not the chocolate bar that you want there's a reason that you're picking the chocolate bar. And what you're saying is you have to get to that reason and, and, and do that kind of deep dive into, into finding out why. Exactly. And, you know, that, that can actually be really difficult for some people to actually reach that level of awareness. And that's why I think, you know, even podcasts with yourself or, you know, going to nutritional workshops or listening to speakers or people that really empower you and maybe have gone on this journey before is actually very, very helpful and can help you get a little pinch of that awareness. But also you have to do the intrinsic work as well. You need to ask yourself the fundamental questions, you know, but even before you get to the questions, some people don't even know the questions to ask, you know, so it's like, you, you just need to start looking out for the little signs that are showing up in your life. For example, if you're very stressed in work, you have low energy, your eating pattern is all over the place, like there's something going on there. If you get home from work and you need to reach for wine or alternatively, you need to have a nap, you know, your body is giving you signs. So it's about tuning in. It's about being really intuitive and, you know, getting that awareness and then, yes, putting those performance mindset tools in place to help you get to where you want to be. 
And what are the questions people should be asking? So like, if they are going for that glass of wine or that chocolate bar, whatever, you know, you're saying that they, sometimes people don't know what questions to ask without getting you know, yeah. overly specific. But what, you know, what should they be asking themselves? Well, I think if let's take the, the, the glass of wine example. First, sort of, you, you could ask yourself, well, why, why am I drinking this? You know, why, you know, is this a habit? Do I need this? And another really, really good technique is, okay, you say to yourself, right, the glass, the wine is here, okay, use my 10 minute rule. I'm gonna leave the wine there, I'm gonna move away for 10 minutes, okay? If after the 10 minutes, I still really want the wine, I'm really craving it, do you know what? Don't deny yourself. But that will start off a pattern of thought that will start to just, just disrupt the feedback loop that you've had for years and, well, maybe it's years, I don't know, depending on the person, it may be a recent thing, um, but it will just start to disrupt those patterns, those paradigms, and help you create the awareness to know that actually you do need to make a shift. Okay, so stepping away from the decisions really, it's stepping back and saying, look, give yourself 10 minutes and it's breaking that kind of loop cycle or thought cycle and saying, actually, maybe you don't want it or maybe you do want it. And if you do want it, go and enjoy it, but give yourself the 10 minutes with which to make that decision. Yeah, and also, you know, I suppose if you want to go a bit deeper, you know, you could even look at time fr- frames in terms of when did I start drinking the wine? You know, was this something that I started during COVID? What was happening during COVID? I had lots of free time. I was at home. Maybe I was extremely stressed. I t- tried to manage family and work at home in a, an apartment or whatever that looks like, you know. So, yeah, you, you, there's various, I suppose, variables, but even as Asking yourself those basic fundamental questions will start you on that sort of journey to, you know, your path to greatness, essentially, where you want to be. Tell us a bit more about how you got into this this line of work and your own lived experience with, with, with food. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, um, well, I was a primary school teacher for 15 years and my business, like the Whole Food Hero, has really manifested from my lived experience when I was teaching. Um, I mean, I wasn't seriously ill, nothing like that, but I was, I, I seemed to come down with nagging, persistent sicknesses a lot. And I'm currently in the process of trying to get my doctor's records, actually, because I've estimated that over a 15 year period, I had 45, um, you know, separate antibiotic prescriptions. So can you imagine what that is doing to your gut health? And when you think about your gut health and the importance of your microbiome, which is, you know, on the tip of everybody's tongue at the minute, if your gut is not healthy and not in a good place, chances are, you know, even if you take the antibiotics out of it, you're leaving yourself wide open to just recurring sicknesses. So when I was teaching, I really struggled with chest infections, throat infections, um, kidney infections, and, and even just things that we sort of accept as normal, but we really shouldn't accept as normal, like low energy. I, I, I used to get in from teaching every single day I had to have a nap wow. every single day. And I used to kid myself, you know, I used to kid myself like, oh, this is normal. I'm working so hard. You know, I just need a little power nap. But in actual fact, I mean, unless you're an elite athlete or you're recovering from some sort of, you know, serious illness, there's not really any reason why you should need to nap. So, yeah. Um, so I suppose, you know, that brought me on my own health journey. Um Around the age of 28, I remember distinctly climbing the highest peak in the morns here, Sleeve Donard. Oh, yeah, I've been up and, there. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I could actually see it from this window, but um, with my now husband. And just as we were coming towards the summit, I, I mean, I kind of struggled on the way up anyway, but I literally couldn't get to the top. He had to grab my hand and pull me to the top. Like I was 28 and, you know, it... It just wasn't cool. So I thought, okay, 
we were, you know, plan to get married and have a family. We now have a family of four very young children. And I just knew I had to get healthy. Like I had to get healthier for myself, obviously, but also to have a healthy pregnancy and to have a healthy family life. So, yeah, I went on a, a, a you know, a huge journey, I guess, um, leading to setting up the Whole Food Hero in 2022 and just never looking back. And of course, those trigger points are important, aren't they, for change? Like people, you know, they may accept a, a, a certain quality of life or a way of life like you had. But the, when you have that, that, that trigger for change, they are really important moments in one's life where it makes you really kind of focus and prioritize your health, your wellness and not kind of accept the, the norm that so many people uh, live through now, which is the normalization of needing that nap, of being exhausted in the afternoon, of having low, the poor sleep, low energy, poor food choices. Like society has normalized that and we do need that kind of trigger point sometimes to really get us to shift from that and focus on, on, on health. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, some people call it a light bulb moment. For me, that was my punch in the face. It was like, wake up, Edel. You know, you're 28. You're struggling with your energy. You're you're sick a lot. You're taking antibiotics. You know, you're you're not living to your full potential either. And I suppose it's only now that I would consider myself to be probably an optimal health that I can actually look back and join the dots. So. You know, but I want to say to people listening as well, you know, clearly I wasn't always this healthy. I mean, clearly, you know, but you can be, you absolutely can be. There's no such thing as a silver bullet. It's not going to happen overnight, but with the right guidance and with the right mindset, of course, you will get there. And you know what? You'll be running up sleeved honoured <laughs> by the time you get there. And why Why do you think people accept it? They, that they accept how their, their energy levels are, that they, they accept how they feel or, 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 or how they look or whatever. You know, why do you think it's, it's, it's stress? Is it the busyness of life? You know, what, what's your thoughts behind it? Yeah, I think it's, it's a multiple of things. I think... If you, if you think about stress, when you are stressed or, you know, highly stressed, it's very, very difficult to concentrate on anything other than the thing that you're stressed about. So let's say, you know, your work is falling to pieces or there's a lot of work stress, for example. You, you have tunnel vision on the thing that needs to get done. So it's very, very hard to even think about all the other things that are going on. So they sort of get sidelined. Um, yeah. And, and then I suppose, you know, why do people accept those norms? I, I just I think people have been a bit disempowered and we're living in a sick care system as opposed to a health care system where we're being pushed pills left, right and center. I think, you know, whilst there's a lot of education out there, it's it's the job of, of myself and yourself and other health advocates to inform people that there is a better way. You know, there is a better way. It's not a more difficult way, um, you know, because I. And, and of course, then there's the argument of time. You know, I don't have enough time. But again, I think people who say that are stressed because let's take Elon Musk, for example. Elon Musk has the same number of hours in the week than any of the rest of us. Look what he's achieved, you know. So I I, I mean, I, I don't want to sound harsh here, but I don't really buy that argument of I don't have enough time because if you reprioritize and you flip things around, in fact, you've got all the time in the world. So it's just a bit of reprioritization. But when you're stressed, it's difficult to see that. And part of the time thing for people is making better choices when it comes to their food choices. So and chat us through as the whole food hero, your concept on food choices and, and what they should be choosing and why, you know, and why mm -hmm. that's your that's your your, your philosophy. Yeah, well, my ethos, I guess, is largely plant-based. I mean, I it doesn't mean no meat, but because I do think protein sources from animals are still quite important, especially if you're you're working out, you're trying to build muscle and that type of thing. But from a nutritional point of view, I mean, you know, we should be aiming for a variety of 30 different plants per week. Now that includes fruits and vegetables and seeds and, you know, grains and, and all of it. Um, but yes, my philosophy is whole food, real food and staying away from the ultra processed junk. I mean, 
you know, I don't know if you're familiar with ultra processed people, but it's one of my favorite, favorite books, Chris Van Tilliken. And, you know, he refers to ultra processed food as not food, as edible substance. Um, and I, for years I've been saying it's junk, you know, it really is junk. Now, that's not to say people can't enjoy a treat. We all like a treat from time to time. But you, if you are over consuming highly, highly processed food, you're on a very, very slippery slope to you know, weight gain, potential obesity, type 2 diabetes, cancers. I mean, there are 32 um, known illnesses attached to ultra processed foods now. And the research, you know, is really only kind of emerging, to be fair. So, yeah, that's, that, that's I guess, is my philosophy. And of course, calorie counting is something, and it's not something I do or recommend a lot of the time myself. And you're on a, of a similar, a similar wavelength with regards to calorie counting. Yes. So, I mean, calories, you know, what, what is a calorie? So it's a, a measurement of the heat exerted in your body when you eat food. You know, calories really are debunked because we are all so different. And I'm a big, big fan girl of Dr. Tim Spector. So he's the professor of epidemiology in King's College in London. And you know, if you read any of the research that's come out with the Zoe wearable, um, your listeners might be familiar with that. You know, it just reinforces that. Um, oh, I've lost my train of thought now. That's okay. That's <laughs> we 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 ha, we, ha, we, ha, we had Tim Spector on several, several about a year ago, or a year and a half ago, maybe. He was fascinating, and you know, we're chatting about yes. calories and the fact that actually the calories, they aren't really yes, the, yes. they aren't really the primary thing to look for with regards to food. Yeah. Yes, because you know, if you think about calories. Um, we're all physiologically so different. So I may metabolize, you know, calories from an apple very differently to the way you would metabolize them. And also, you know, coming back to that whole food piece and that whole food matrix, every food has will have a different matrix so let's say we have an apple in this hand, we have an apple juice, even an unsweetened apple juice in this hand, you know, you would think, oh, they're they're very similar foods. Yes, they are in terms of their taste and, and that, but their matrix is very, very different. So with the apple, I'm getting lots of fiber. I'm getting a bit of vitamin C, a little bit of protein, carbohydrate. What am I getting with the apple juice? I'm getting a huge dose of, of carbohydrate and sugar, which is going to give me a huge spike and then, a, a, you know, a, a very sharp dip. So, it's, there's so much more involved than just calories. And that's why, to be honest, I've never really used calories in my, in my work with my clients. And of course, for anyone listening in, goal setting is really where all of this begins in terms of making those food choices and working on the questions when you're having that, that 10 minute rule uh, and the choices that you make. The goal setting piece is crucial to all of this. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, you know, in terms of goals, like I think... I think it's it's important to set a goal that challenges you but doesn't scare you completely because if you think about something that is so far away so untangible that you know you think oh I'm never going to get there just creates a bit of fear and a bit of resistance whereas you set yourself something like maybe, for example, just to use myself as a personal example, I'm I'm doing my first triathlon this year. You know, to me, I'm starting with the amateur and then I'm going to sprint, you know, because to me, that's realistic for me. You know, everybody's goals are going to be different. But, you know, in order to be successful, I think as humans intrinsically, we feel like we, we need to reach a goal. And what, what is success? It's the realization of a worthy ideal. So in terms of your goals, if you're setting goals, what I always say to people is, is it worthy? Is it something that you genuinely want to achieve? And when you achieve it, it's going to give you that satisfaction or the aspiration to, to your, you know, your greater health that you were looking for. Then in that case, it's the goal for you, you know, but, but you know, challenge, but realistic at the same time. One of the things we often ask people when they come on is what three key takeaways they would love the listener to get from the episode. And we, we, we've covered a lot of ground in the last 20 minutes or so. If I was to ask that question to you, what would your key takeaways for people be? Okay, I think number one is never underestimate the power of your thoughts. Your thoughts control absolutely everything you do. Number two, 
try to eat more whole foods. They honestly will optimize everything, your health, your performance and productivity and work and your life in general. And number three, I would say, take the pressure off, you know, um, be kind to yourself because we do live in a very time poor, high stress world at the moment in particular. There's a lot of global stresses, you know, that are affecting people as well. So be kind to yourself and you will get there. You absolutely will. One foot in front of the other, one micro habit day after day. Yeah. And for anyone listening in who's thinking, I think that was a really interesting interview, but actually, you know what? It's too hard. I'm too busy. It's too big a stretch. It is, <laughs> you know, I'll start in a month or I'll do it in, or in six months or whatever. Chat, talk to that person because you have their ear now. So like to those, to someone who's thinking those kind of things, what do you say to them? Well, the first thing I would say is why put it off for a month when you can do it today? And when I say micro steps, I mean break it down to the smallest level you possibly can so that there's no overwhelm whatsoever. Of course, that's a very, very personal thing. It's going to look different for different people. But let's take the example of water. Your, your energy is low because you're dehydrated because you're not drinking enough water. What, what could you do tomorrow morning that would get you started on this path to health? What you could do is get, I mean, an egg cup. <laughs> I mean, you know, a small glass of water. And I love the work of BJ Foggs. He's a behavioral um, expert in Stanford University, and he talks about tiny habits. Just start with that little habit. Every single day, leave your little egg cup or your little small glass sitting on your windowsill. Don't even move it, okay? Make it so super easy that it's, you know, it's idiot proof. And take that water every single morning, wire in that habit, and when you're fully sure and confident that you're ready to move on to something else, then move on to something else. And, you know, what you'll find is the more of those little tiny habits that you can start wiring in and anchoring in and maybe just replacing other behaviors, you know, less healthy behaviors with that behavior, it will gain momentum. And over the weeks and over the months, you know, it will add up and you'll, you'll get there. Yeah. Fantastic advice, Udell. Fair play. If people want to find you online or I know you have a webinar that they can follow, where can they find you? Yes, so I hang out on LinkedIn mostly. Um, I do have an Instagram page. So you can uh, link in with me there as well. Um, yes, so I have a webinar actually coming up for busy professionals, business owners. Um, I'm involved with um, the Awaken Hub group. Um, maybe some of your listeners are familiar. So female founders and entrepreneurs, this is for you if you're listening. It is on the 4th of April at 7.15. And the, the, the key focus really is going to be helping people with their mindset and their energy um you know for nutrition and for life and you know so that they can grow successful businesses and lead optimal lives Adele it's been fantastic to have you on the show thank you so much for joining us we really really appreciate it and great content for all our listeners too so fair play thanks a million folks I really hope you enjoyed today's episode of Real Health with me Carl Henry brilliant advice great content to put into action over the course of the week as ever you know where we are at Carl Henry PT on Instagram Real Health on the Irish Independent website and as ever have a great week we'll see you next week it's long ago. Foe.